factor tonight. Well, they got pounded on the boards in Houston, as we mentioned, and you know, that just can't happen. It's, it's called unscripted offense. That's what Kelvin Sampson calls it, and on the road, he really looks to go to the glass. Look at those hands by Jamal Shedd, tipped out of bounds. It'll stay here with SMU. Well, Shedd and Sasser, SMU has to do a much better job of getting down and dirty in a stance, communicating, and play the pick-and-roll game much better than they did in their first matchup. They don't even give you a second to breathe. Jamal Shit is just right there all game. Now they do a great job of mixing their coverages as well. You know, they'll do some switching, they'll mix up their pick and roll coverage, but when the ball goes into the box, expect a trap down low. Shot clock winding down, Zurich Phelps, a tough three off the mark. That's what Houston does. They're gonna force them into tough shots. Take a look at the starting five for Houston. Sasser and Shed, their all-star backcourt. There's Sasser, his first Smith. Three on two, SMU with the break, and that is Williamson with our first bucket of the game. Well, SMU is much better than you coming off of a tough loss in double overtime at Wichita State, and Houston has won the tip. Now, SMU has the ability to hang with Houston tonight, but they cannot get back on their heels. They must come early, talk, communicate, and offensively really share the ball. Jarris Walker, their star freshman. Jamon Mark puts it on the floor, his first shot off the mark. And SMU, when we talked to head coach Rob Lanier, said rebounding is going to be a factor tonight. Well, they got pounded on the boards in Houston, as we mentioned, and you know, that just can't happen. It's, it's called unscripted offense. That's what Kelvin Sampson calls it. And on the road, he really looks to go to the glass. Look at those hands by Jamal Shedd, tipped out of bounds. It'll stay here with SMU. Well, Shedd and Sasser. SMU has to do a much better job of getting down and dirty in a stance, communicating, and play the pick and roll game much better than they did in their first matchup. They don't even give you a second to breathe. Jamal Shit is just right there all game. Now they do a great job of mixing their coverages as well. You know, they'll do some switching, they'll mix up their pick and roll coverage, but the ball goes into the box, expect a trap down low. Shot clock winding down, Zurich Phelps, a tough three off the mark. That's what Houston does. They're going to force them into tough shots. Take a look at the starting five for Houston. Sasser and Shedd, their all-star backcourt. There's Sasser, his first Smith. Three on two, SMU with the break, and that is Williamson with our first bucket of the game. Well, SMU is much better than their record. They've lost a ton of close games this year. They've gone through some injuries. Zach Nuttall, Zerk Phelps been dealing with stuff as well. They look pretty healthy, and they had a very good practice this morning with a lot of energy. There's a strip, an early turnover for SMU. They're going to try to push the pace early on. Phelps in transition. Coach, you like that shot? It's a little quick, but you got to take what you can get against this Houston defense. I, I would like to see the wings attack instead of go to the three-point line. Here's Shed from downtown. His shot off the mark. And we've noticed early on for Houston, the shots are one and done. One and done. And that gets, gets Kelvin Sampson out of his chair. Rob Lanier talked about rebound. You can see early they're doing a good job blocking out. Jalen Smith, the sophomore out of Orlando. The hard take plus the foul. Well, we talked to Rob Lanier about it today, and it was pretty evident that they were shell-shocked in the first 10 minutes uh, of the game at in Houston. And you learn from that. You learn from that of the speed you have to play against and with, and also the ability to be strong with the basketball and, and put the pressure on Houston's defense by trying to attack. That game you're talking about back in January, Houston won by 24. It wasn't really even that close. And for SMU, they were coming off of a good road trip in Hawaii, a good win against Tulsa to start the season. That was really a wake-up call for this SMU team. They've kept their positive energy. They're still playing with a lot of confidence despite their record. Cheney off the bench, backdoor cut, first bucket for Houston. A good movement of the basketball, and that's what Houston does well. Don't turn your head. They will back cut you to death. That all misses his three. Rebound goes to Shed. A 4-2 start for SMU here. Sasser from downtown rips down the net. 
See, that's the problem SMU had in the first game. And you, know, you have to understand, you cannot get caught ball watching. When you're guarding Marcus Sasso, you have to be right up on his shoe tops on the catch. Double team in the post, so the man is open on the wing. Extra passing. Look at Houston recover, though. Inside, ODG with the finish. Well, that is just excellent ball movement by SMU. They, they know the trap's coming. They spaced out on the weak side, reversed the ball, then reversed it back, and then went inside. Excellent offensive movement. F.E. ODG, the graduate transfer. Coach Lanier told us about him. Starting conference play, changed his attitude, became a team player, and that's when his team took off. There's Tremont Mark knocking down a three. Again, another one of those wings for Houston that they are so aware of where the defense is. They move the ball from side to side so quick it never touches the floor. Not all. Hot hounded by Mark. Williamson with the cut, eye off the glass, and it goes. Well, better weak side ball movement and player movement for SMU. They're spacing the court. Not as much dribbling as they normally do because they know Houston will eat you up off the bounce. They're trying to beat the defense with the pass. Trying to establish the big man, but Larkin said decides to penetrate. This is Walker. Tipped out of bounds, it'll be SMU ball. What a start for the Mustangs. Uh, confidence early, we saw it this morning, shoot around a team that night, so SMU clearly is uh, an elite team and a number one seed to this point. Excuse me, Houston. Williamson, he rips down the nylon, SMU up by two. Well, Houston is not up in their face as, as they normally are, and I think Kelvin Sampson's pretty upset. He's been going up and down the bench trying to find guys that will play that defense that he has installed with this group. Tremont Mark, he'll be fouled shooting a three. So this is, this is un-Houston-like. Just like Williamson gets a lot of space there. And the closeout is there, but not tight enough. Jairus Walker is two or three steps away from the shooter. Looks like he may come to the bench for a discussion about that defense. So first foul on Emery Lanier sends Mark to the free throw line to shoot three as he knocks down the first. Anything surprise you early on with SMU a one-point lead? No, I just think they're playing with confidence. I like their talent. I like their talent. I mean, they've lost a ton of close games. The record could be a lot different, but you, know, you are who you are. But Rob Lanier is confident this, this team can keep growing down the stretch. And I, I believe him because when you watch a practice like we did this morning, you saw that attitude that they had, bringing it with a lot of energy and focus on the game plan. Good things can happen very, very quickly. Well, we spoke to Coach Lanier this morning. He said, regardless of what happens today, I know what tomorrow's going to look like. There's Cheney poking it away, stays here with SMU. For a coach, what does that mean, knowing what your guys are going to bring every day in practice? Well, that's half the battle, especially when you're having a losing season. You know, it's, things can go wrong very quickly and in a lot of different directions, and it's, it's hard to get it back on track. And Rob's done a good job of keeping them on track, and... You know, they're pointing towards March. They're pointing towards the American tournament, gain a little momentum here in the last few weeks, and then maybe make a run in Fort Worth. He admitted this has not been one of his favorite seasons, but he said for the group, this is actually one of his favorite group of guys to coach. On the floor, Sasser coming away with the steal from Houston. in the post, has a mismatch against Lanier, trying to back him down, gets to his left hand and finishes. Well, that's where Kelvin Sampson is a, is a genius, uh, developing his bench over the season now because come out, come out on the road tonight, don't present that energy that he wants or the toughness, and he goes right to his bench. He's looking for guys early to impact winning. He will bench guys quickly if they're not ready to play. Lanier, his three off the mark, Cheney with the rebound.
Both teams shooting over 50% from the floor right now. Inside battle with the big man. Roberts was looking for a call. SMU ball. Phelps thought it was deflected, but it's going to be a turnover. Houston ball. Well, that wasn't a good decision by Zerk Phelps. He, he left the floor without anything real place to throw it to. He felt the double, but he's trying to throw it back to Williamson, but should have never picked up his dribble because they were it was a soft trap. I think it was just kind of a hard hedge. If he would have kept his dribble, he probably could have drove the ball into the lane. Javier Francis, Emmanuel Sharp checking in for the first time for Houston. Sasser, pull up. Stepping to Dorbic into the game for the first time. A sophomore out of Serbia with the rebound. Well, so far, so good for SMU. They are doing their job on the defensive glass. Williamson, he's been effective offensively. Can't get that one to go off the window. Really good job of creating an angle again. Couldn't get it to go home. Robert scored the last time he touched it here. Going to work on the block, throwing it up and in. Yoan Roberts making him pay inside. What a program he has turned Houston into. They are the gold standard here in the American. Active hands, ball on the floor, bodies down there. And it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow stays here with SMU. But there are no easy passes, and you've got Houston hands in the passing lanes. Well, you've got to have proper spacing. That's the first thing, and that's basketball one-on-one. -on -one. But against Houston, it's paramount because of the fact if you don't, they will just keep you on one side of the floor. They will attack not only every pass, but every dribble. So you've got to have limited excess dribbling, good motion without the ball, good movement, and some basket cuts. And SMU's done that so far tonight. Goes to Ambrose Hilton. Six on the shot clock for the Mustangs. Someone's got to get it up. Ambrose Hilton trying to keep it alive, but SMU looked completely lost that possession, but they still keep possession. Well, that's what Houston's defense does to you. It makes you look lost or disorganized at times because they make you feel uncomfortable as soon as you bring the ball across half court. And the thing they really do well is they do not gamble. They're fundamentally so sound. Dorovich blocked by Sharp. Phelps driving hard, and he finishes with the left hand. Uh, we didn't see that in the first matchup in Houston because Eric Phelps was playing with a I'm a bad back tonight. He looks fluid and confident offensively that time going with the offhand Phelps trying to deny gets on the floor tips it out of bounds The energy is there SMU knows the number two team in the country is on their floor. We got a good decision He doesn't want you to hold the ball. He wants you to either pass it dribble it or shoot it quickly But he's more upset now about their defense yeah, we saw him pretty animated in the break in that last time out talking to his guys. Oh, Roberts caught a body. Hey, now. Well, that's part of Houston's offensive scheme. They'll space you on the wings and in the corners, and they'll play the two-man game in the middle of the floor, hoping that you don't help off shooters and you can't guard the, the man on the short roll. That was the hard roll right to the rim. If the big man touches it, Houston comes with a hard trap. Good pump fake. Phelps. Oh, give me that. But they call the foul on Roberts. This is what we're talking about on, on Houston's offensive philosophy. They'll run this to death on the pick and roll in the middle of the floor. And if you don't show early and get up into the vision of the passer, Roberts presents himself pretty big. And bit with the body. Are you playing volleyball or basketball out here tonight? Sean Roberts checking it. 
for blood on his elbow because I think he blocked that shot with his elbow. But he he got Phelps with the body. But that's what you have to do, what Zerk Phelps did on that last possession. When you reverse the ball, Houston closes out so hard and so fast on the shooters on the perimeter. You've got to show them a little ball fake here and there, and that's what Phelps did and got all the way to the rim. Much different this second go-around between the Houston and SMU. First game on January 5th, Houston won by 24. Tonight, we've got a two-point game here in this first half. Extra step inside, Walker. And they say he lost it going up, SMU ball. Well, SMU's doing a much better job of converging on the basketball in the paint and around the rim, not only with the first defender, the secondary defender, and then they're rotating down on the weak side to help on the glass. DG on the block calling for it. Before the double comes, he gets the shot off. There's Mark with the rebound. One thing about doing Houston games from this vantage point, point is you can feel the heat of their defense from floor level. Williamson called for the bump as Walker was going to the lane. The freshman Jarris Walker, we talked to Kelvin Sampson about him today and just what he needed to do when he got here as a freshman so highly touted but they've really turned him into a great player well he's, he's able now to help others out when he got to houston obviously highly regarded but with short steps and uh, teaching him the houston way and what kelvin sampson wanted and he really has learned and developed quickly and a hook shot like that he has developed that game here at houston Working with Kellen Sampson before and after practice. Jerish Walker working his way into the first round of the NBA upcoming draft. So DG, good D by Roberts, got the deflection. This is Sharp, his three in and out. SMU's done a great job on the boards tonight. They have. They've, they're getting their guards involved. Their guards aren't watching the play. They're getting down into the paint and helping out. That won't get it done for SMU. Zerk Phelps, that's just way too quick. You know, no pass half-court possessions will kill you against Houston. Sharp, the freshman, second chance. And there's Walker with the tip in. Again, in a short period of time, Jarris Walker is showing you his complete game. He can also step outside. They'll spot him up on the three-point line. If not, they'll use his power in the lane. Oh, DG, he splits the D and goes reverse for the lay-in. That was a nice look on the inside. Oh, DG had such deep post position that Houston didn't have time to go down and trap on the box. Shed calling out traffic. He wants the screen from Walker. Six seconds on the shot clock for the Cougars. Shed will take it himself. His three is short. One and done again for Houston. Not all. Nobody checked him. And his three grims out. We'll have even more football for you with the XFL season kicking off Saturday. Coverage of the Vegas Vipers and Arlington Renegades begins at 3 Eastern on ABC. We also got three more games over the weekend on ESPN and FX with every game available on ESPN Plus. Tim, I will be the final game of the weekend, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN on Sunday night. Seattle Sea, Dra sea Dragons taking on the D.C. Defenders. I cannot wait to call Let's them. Let's go, John Schifrin. Let's go. Congratulations on the gig. Uh, ESPN once again showing they know what they're doing. How are you? Broadcast the initial season. And if it's not college hoops, it will be... Little spring football. What a no look pass by Walker inside to Javier Francis. I appreciate the love, man. XFL, it is a different brand of football. Guys want it bad. It is going to be so much fun. But they just want the chance to get to the NFL. Again, one side possessions for SMU. This, this game can get away from you quickly if you don't stay with your game plan and be patient. Oh! Walker tried to yam it, and he's fouled going up. Timeout on the floor. Houston with a six-point lead here in Dallas. 
Okay, Kelvin Sampson said to us, so we, were, we were a young team, of course. We had Jamal Shedd and Marcus Sasser. But Marcus didn't play last year. You know, they had some injuries. They've got a lot of young players. He thought, I'm not sure early we're going to be good. They're solid early. They were really good. They beat Virginia. They beat a very good St. Mary's team. And then they've kind of taken off and have never looked back. And you know, they find a way because they do one thing every night, and they're starting to do it now, impose their will on the defensive end of the floor. There's Tremont Mark poking it away. Talk to Kellen Sampson, assistant coach for Houston Cougars. He felt like the second half of the second Temple game, the one in Philly, where they just dominated the half, that was kind of the turning point in the season for this team. It showed them just how good they can be if they play like that on a consistent basis. Well, it's one thing, you know, Kel Kelvin Sampson, again, that's why he's one of the best coaches in the game, is that he didn't no. panic at halftime of that game. And Nice job by Nuttall. No, no. Reversing the ball. That's what you have to do against SMU, against Houston. You have to make sure the ball changes sides of the floor. Nuttall knocks down the first three of the game for SMU. They trail by three as we approach seven minutes to play in this first half. Walker attracts all the attention. Sasser open, missing the three. Look at Mark keeping it alive. Houston shooting two for nine from deep to start this game. Shot clock's at five. Mark, his man in the air. That one rings out. Good job by SMU on the contest. Making Mark feel uncomfortable out on the perimeter. Dangerous pass. Phelps keeps picking his dribble up. He needs to attack to the rim. This time he takes the three, leaves it short. Rebound goes to Walker. SMU calling out defensive assignments in transition. Shed saw the breakdown and goes right to the bucket. Well, he is a special player. We all know how he runs the team, but he's finding a way now to score a little bit more and have a little bit of balance. Kelvin Simpson wants him to attack and be, be a scorer when he has that opportunity. Trying to be aggressive. And they call a foul as he goes through the lane against Mark. Well, I can tell you one thing from experience. You sleep much better at night when you have a Jamal Shedd and a Marcus Sasser running your team. And that's what Kelvin Sampson does. He gives them a lot of freedom out there because he trusts them. And he knows they're such intelligent players that they will go when it's time and then they will slow when it's time and get everybody involved in the offense. There's Shedd with the steal. Hey now, Jamal Shedd with a breakaway jam. Just Houston at its best, but that's a, that's a mental error by SMU. Too much air underneath that ball. Baseline out of bounds. You have to make the simple pass. Phelps, he's hounded by Sasser. Throws up a tough shot. Sharp will find Shed in transition. He'll pull up and nail the three. Houston fans in attendance, they are loving this run by the Cougars. Your name. You know you are going to face the best shot every single night. What does it take to prepare for that? Knowing that for, for SMU, this is their biggest game of the year. You know, it's an overused word, John, but culture is so important. Plus the foul, FBO DG. And again, moving the ball from side to side with short passes, good ball movement, but also good player movement. When SMU has done that, they've had easier opportunities. But going back to Houston, we were talking today with Kelvin Sampson. One thing I've noticed about his team and studying them, listening to them, reading about them, is that their players, when they talk to the media, they speak his language. You know, they're, talk they're giving the message of the team that he wants out there, and that is team, team, team. Share the basketball. Play hard every moment, every minute. And that's when you come into this program, that's how it's built. And so they're not going to worry about anybody's best shot. They're going to be ready. Walker, free throw jumper with a hand in his face, nails it. And again, not a lot of wasted movement. Just a quick one dribble into the gap, find an angle, balance it up, and knock it home. 
Chris Walker, three of five from the field. He's got six points. In the paint, nice slip by ODG. Nice. Assist goes to Nuttall. Nice spacing, and Houston not giving a lot of protection on the backside as far as weak side rotations, and here comes some subs because Calvin Sampson did not like that easy bucket, but give SMU credit. Good job running that two-man game in the middle of the floor. From the corner, that's sharp, and he'll nail the three. Well, another freshman that's come a long way this season. Kelvin Sampson has developed this bench over time, and now the young guns are ready to go. Timeout on the floor. Houston getting some separation up by 10, under four to play in this first half. Working tonight because I heard it was 70 degrees in Connecticut today, and that means golf. <laughs> Jordan Cornette. It is not 70 degrees here in Dallas. It was a cold day here. But we got a good one inside. Nuttall knocks down a three for SMU. Gets the lead back to single digits. He took his time, and, and Kelvin Sampson not happy. Not enough pressure on the perimeter, but Nuttall's a tough player because if you get too tight on him, he will dribble drive it into the gap. How about this? A little 2-3 zone from SMU defensively. I like it. You've got to mix it up. You cannot let Houston feel comfortable, but there are issues SMU are on the offensive end right now. Roberts found the soft spot, and it rolls in. Now that's the problem. When you don't play a lot of zone, you don't play it as tough as your man-to-man, -man. and that time, just too easy in the middle of the floor for Roberts. The five-man did not step up and protect. Nuttall with the blow-by, finishes in traffic. Now that's a good job by Nuttall, just mixing and matching his game according to the defense, and that time they closed out on him hard, and he took advantage. Nuttall, three of five from the floor. He's got eight points for SMU. The Mustangs, they stay in their zone. Shed penetrating, and he'll be held. Foul called against Smith. Well, Zach Nuttall trying to single-handedly keep the Mustangs involved in this game. And good job changing the floor, changing sides of the floor again. And Pierce Walker stepped up, but kind of reached in and didn't protect. Picks up his dribble, nine on the shot clock. They get it back to the freshman, and look at that shot from the outside. Jarris Walker knocking down the three. He's got nine. Samuel Williamson was playing that back wing, back forward spot in the zone, and he kind of just got caught ball watching and let Walker loose. He missed the bunny. Ten point lead for Houston. Shed, little hesitation dribble, gets to the rack. Just no wasted movement, just understanding. I'm going to find an angle with good balance, under control, big time finish. Shed and Walker lead the way for Houston, both have nine. And they force the turnover. Jarris Walker, we saw what he can do on the inside, but this is one thing he is allowed to do, a catch and shoot threes. And Shed just finds an angle, gets in there with the bigs. Got such explosive energy around the rim and toughness as well. Houston has hit a perfect eight of eight. Last eight times down the floor. They are finding the open spots. Showing a lot of patience too offensively. And they are, they understand, they're well schooled. They're just trying to wait for SMU to make a mistake. Sharp sheds his defender. Oh, can't finish. Not all. He's rising up. Go Houston's way. Man, I'm keeping for these rebounds. It looks like a football game. Zach Null is trying to win the game in one possession against a, one of the best defensive teams in America. Got to be patient. Understand the clock. Cutting Walker. Offensive foul. Standing right there. Apparently, Walker led with that. 
before the offensive foul, but Tony Chan. Just the 15th foul against Houston. SME with 14. Letting him play in this first half. Under a minute to. Look at Cheney. That's why you can't pick on the pruner just inside. No one was open. SMU trying to go a little too. Phelps is going. Good to see him get back up. Boy, caught me cutting through the lane. You earned it? No, I had to earn that one. Nobody else was giving it up. And a foul against Walker. Well, congratulations to the Eastern Conference All-Star coach, Joe Mazzula. He's named it the head coach of the Celtics today. Happy to see that. He's done a great job and uh, will be coaching the East. Against Mike Malone. Celtics are the favorite, right? Believe it or not, John, let me give you a little trivia. Mike Malone and Joe Mazzula went to the same high school in Warwick, Rhode Island, Bishop Hendrickson High School. How about that one? How about that? I'm glad he didn't ask me because he knew I was not going to get that one. I'll bring a little intel once in a while. <laughs> a little Rhode Island connection. All of the 401 is very proud. <laughs> Shot clock turned off. Final shot for Houston if they want it. What do you want to see out of this possession? Oh, it's going to be the same. They're going to go middle ball screen, see if SMU will bite. They'll space the court. If they overhelp, they'll look to go roll and replace. They'll maybe hit Sasser on the wing for a three. If not, they got the two-man game in the middle, shed all the way to the rim. Just like that. So there goes Shed. Gets to the rim. High off the glass, and it goes. And that's how the first half will end. Houston with a 14-point lead here in Dallas. Shooting almost 60% from the floor. Made nine of their last 11 from the floor. Houston, particularly on the offensive end, Houston started attacking the rim in the last 10 minutes of the first half. SMU, a three-minute scoring drought to end that first half. Also, nobody on the bench for SMU has scored tonight. Shed throwing it up. Oh, baby! Jamal Shed put that on Sports Center. Jamal Shed even had the eyes wide open on that one coming back and said, Jarris, that's what I'm talking about. But Jamal Shed kept that alive because he dribble drove into the paint with no intention except waiting for the defense to make a mistake, looking on the backside for the lob. EG off the pick and roll. Cheney who gets the start here in the second half. Spokes it to his teammate. Over pull up Jay and Cheney poked it out of bounds. How about that alley oop to start the half for Houston? Well, you see, Jamal said just finds a way and on the back side, somehow, some way, no one was even close to Jarris Walker and he read the defense perfectly. You get caught ball watching against Jamal Shedd and Marcus Sasser, they will find the open man. Jamal Shedd, he's got 11 points, five assists, and a steal. Williamson inside, and there's a turnover. And again, trying to squeeze it into the middle of that defense, and Houston really closes out and recovers so quickly on the backside. Sasser slipping three on the wing. He nails the three. Again, you must stay home on him, and that time, Zach Nuttall just bit a little bit on the dribble penetration, and that's all the room Marcus Sasser needs. Houston shooting 40% from downtown. Someone asked Marcus Sasser, how much room do you need to get your shot off? And he said, about an inch. 
but all no good. ODG keeps it alive. And that's pretty much the truth because he doesn't have a ton of room, and Allo does a pretty good job getting to him, but not close enough. And Sasser's such a good athlete, and they do a great job of pinpoint passing right into the pocket. Not all. With the head fake, and he nails the three. Well, that's what you have to do. We spoke about it a little bit in the first half. You've got a head fake and ball fake against this pressure Houston defense because they're closing out so fast, they're going to really run at Phelps and Nuttall. Sasser caught in the air. Turnover. Here comes SMU. Nuttall. Reach in. Called against Walker. thing Houston did in the last part of the first half is they started to get up on the glass better and now they're winning the battle of the boards and SMU did a good job early they got to stay with it though they can't lose hard against this team or else this could get ugly quickly Houston plus six on the rebounding edge and Phelps will draw the foul against Tremont Mark Well, if SMU can reverse the ball and somehow get Zurich Phelps and Zach Nuttall catching the ball on the move on the weak side of the floor, they will have some one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and they're really good one-on-one -on -one players, but they cannot go try to go too quickly in the clock. They must try to work the ball from side to side first, then attack. We just spoke to Rob Lanier. He was actually pretty happy with the way Zurich Phelps has been playing over the last three weeks, said... Game has really started to slow down for him. Hasn't tried to force it, but tonight maybe with the big time opponent, maybe trying to take on a little too much as he knocks down the free throw. Well, there's no doubt about it that Kelvin Sams is going to target those two guys and make sure his defense is very aware that they're not going to have much breathing room on the perimeter. Dangerous pass. Phelps almost with the steal, but he does cause the turnover. Backcourt violation. Kelvin Sampson saying it was deflected first by Phelps. Looks like the, the explanation the officials gave was that it wasn't actually went off the shoulder of the thank good, player. Thank goodness we can't re review that. Here it is. It'd be like the NFL and review everything. Not all. Look at how fast Houston's D closed on him. Well, they really hard hedge on all ball streams. It's almost almost looks like a trap. It's not. They're just waiting for you to go sideways or pick up your dribble, then they attack. SMU with numbers. Phelps puts on the turbos for the lay-in. Well, Zerk Phelps averages four rebounds a game. He needs to get a few more tonight. And if he gets up on the defensive glass, he can do that. Push it down the court with physicality. away by Phelps from behind. Six on the shot clock for Houston. Well, one thing I will tell you, John, is that SMU will not fold. They'll give it their best shot. They, this, they're a good character basketball team. Rob Lanier talked about that. Even in the game in Houston when they were getting blown out, they still played hard right to the final whistle. And they're starting to impose their will a little bit here in the second half. Late whistle called against Phelps as Sasser was snaking free off the inbounds. They did a pretty good job, but that's what Sasser does. He's got that great body control, the lightning quick first step, but also the ability to elevate, hang in the air, and draw the foul. You know what's scary about how good Houston is right now? They haven't even needed the scoring of Sasser tonight. As he goes to the free throw line, rattles in the first. He's got seven points, but it's been Shed and Walker leading the way. They both have 11 for Houston. I mean, so unselfish. He and Shed are... So good at decision-making, pushing the pace when needed, on opportunity, and then in the half court, taking what the defense gives them. And it's obvious SMU is paying a lot of attention to Sasser, so if someone else will step up, and he has no problem with that. See the game so far tonight by Shed and Walker.
helps. He's doubled. And a jump ball is called. Possession arrow with SMU. I mean, they just blitz the ball in. It's really hard to do defensively, especially in the middle of the floor. And this is what they do. This is just a straight trap or blitz, as you call it. Most of the time, they don't do that. But if they see the dribbler backpedaling, they will attack. And that, that time, it was Walker at 6'8", with his size and length. Three seconds on the shot clock. Williamson, tough shot. Fall away. Come on, Mark, Mark trucks it down. Chaney jumping around. He's so open. Finds Sasser on the outlet. Woo! When Houston is letting it rain from three, this team can beat anybody in the country. Well, do you think they're connected or what? I mean, they knew where Sasser was. They know where everyone is on the floor at all times. They obviously always cover the corners. Phelps couldn't finish at the rim. Sasser. This game's starting to speed up. In transition, Phelps, he'll knock down the three. This kind of a pace, who does it favor? Well, it favors, it favors Houston because this is the way they want to play. But for SMU, this scores to try. Feet, and he will. Uh, Marcus Master says he needs about an inch of space to be available starting to get healthy and if they if they're whole headed into march they will be dangerous i'm feeling they're going to make a push here and get into the tournament and kendrick davis once occupied that bench where the white jerseys are at smu and uh, he's having a great year in memphis but they're getting their injuries are Starting to get healed a little bit, and they're, they're going to be very dangerous. Yeah, Penny Hardaway still has two starters out right now. Hoping to get them back in the next few weeks. Look out for Memphis. Not all. Double team. There's Roberts with the steal. Wasted dribbles. Nowhere to go. Move the ball from side to side. You will get smothered if you do that. Try to back in and make something happen when there's no room against Houston. Come on, Mark. He wants some space and gets inside of his big guy, Roberts. Walker drives baseline, and he'll be fouled by Ambrose Hilton. The interesting thing about Jairus Walker as you watch him develop as a freshman is that you know he can play a lot of different ways. He can play the power game. He looks so powerful, and he is powerful. But he also can face, and he takes his time on the perimeter. He gets his feet set and can knock down shots. But then he can do that as well. Just beat you off the bounce with jet quickness and strength. Sharp with some space. Phelps trying to do it himself. And another steal by Roberts. Well, you have to read the defense. The defense was back and set. There was nothing there for an opportunity to force the issue in transition. Shot clock set six for Houston. Sasser. Showing the moves and a reach-in foul called against Ambrose Hilton. Well, there's the savvy of an All-American guard. The ability to know where you are in the shot clock and know who's defending you. And Hilton has no chance against Sasser. John, he's so smart off the bounce that he doesn't, it seems like he never forces it. He finds an angle, he creates one for himself, or he goes on opportunity. But then, if nothing is there at the last second, he, he knows how to elevate and hang and kind of throw his body into the defender. Even if maybe it's not a foul, it looks it sure looks like one because he draws the contact. So he definitely sold that one. Goes one of two from the free throw line.
right in the game for SMU. Here's right penetrating, picks up his dribble. Ogigi lowers the right, and Cheney called for the reach in. And that was a bailout because there was nothing there in the middle of the floor. Houston just reached in, got, had all ball. DG took advantage. So FEO DG go to the line to shoot two. Down by 17. He makes the first. The American Athletic Conference is on ESPN+. Plus. These are our featured upcoming women's matchups. Saturday, Houston takes on Temple at 2 Eastern. SMU squares off against South Florida at 4.30. Plus, every game except the championship game of the American Women's Basketball Tournament is on ESPN+. Plus. And that will begin on March the 6th. If you're an American Athletic Conference fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash AAC. Or you can download the ESPN app. Solid D on this possession for SMU. Shot clock's at three. Sasser's going to have to take a tough one. He'll find Mark. That one's blocked by Phelps. And as you said, Tim, SMU forced the shot clock violation. Well, that was their ghost screen offense, meaning that they, they set a series of ball screens but don't actually set the screen. Just as the ball handler is coming up on the screen, the, the screener will slip or fade out to the perimeter. They never got the ball inside the three-point line, but that was excellent defense by SMU getting down in the stance. Sasser staying right in front of Phelps. DG double team. Somebody's open. Here's Ricardo White. Right can't hit it. Sharp. He will draw the whistle. SMU's been trying to go down low to ODG and with every bounce that the big man makes, whether it's ODG or another post player. The Houston defense takes another step towards the ball and gets big and tries to prevent anything going to the rim, usually with a trap. That time he did a good job of identifying, pitching out to Odigi, but kind of a disjointed possession for SMU. Houston doesn't give you many openings. If you're SMU, you've got to take advantage when you get the stop to go on the other end. Well, one thing, if you do let your man loose, down at this end, you will be on the bench pretty quickly for Kelvin Sampson, and they know it. So they are very connected on their game plan, and their rotations are very good out of the trap on the post. They recover so well on the weak side with their closeouts. Phelps, he's had to work so hard tonight, and he draws the whistle against Shedd. Houston with a 16-point lead here in the second half. Lane. Ron Hunter has turned that program into a, into a winner, which he usually does. So basically what you're saying is that the American Conference Tournament is going to be fun. It is, because these teams are good. You know, they're not necessarily, obviously, in consideration for at-large yet. Memphis is, and I do think Memphis is going to get an at-large bid. But I think someone other than Cincinnati, excuse me, Houston or Memphis could win the tournament, although you're going to have to... Have a pretty perfect night to beat this team. Sharp sets his feet. Bang, bang. Emmanuel Sharp has turned into a weapon off the bench for Houston. Well, Jamal Shedd is, he is precision plus running this basketball team. And Kelvin Sampson said, listen, you're our point guard. I want you to be more like Tom Brady than Patrick Mahomes. So Kelvin's always got other sport references. He's a big sports fan, but meaning that he wants you to make the simple play, you know, the easy play, the solid play, and that'll turn into a great play. Earlier in Shedd's career, he tried to make too many home run plays, but 
Now coming into tonight, 140 assists, only 46 turnovers, and just head up all the time. Court awareness, A plus, leadership even better. It's incredible that he knows exactly what his team needs at every moment. In the first half, his team needed scoring. He poured in 11 points. Now in the second half, he's dishing out dimes. He's got seven assists on the game. Well, I want to commend you at shoot-around today for getting Kelvin Sampson to talk about basketball because usually when we get together, he wants to talk about the Super Bowl, uh, his beloved Astros. Uh, we were talking a little Tiger Woods today, but we, you did get him to talk some hoops. Cheney. He is fouled. He likes talking hoops when he talks about this team because he said, I know when we have a good team, we have a good team. I said, well, Kelvin, you didn't have to tell us that. We knew that coming in. But, you know, they're built to last. They really are because of just how connected they are. He, developing the bench, getting Sharp, getting Arsenal, getting JVR Francis, uh, develop, the development of Walker, you know, Roberts on the interior. Mark knowing his role as a shooter on the wing, and then the two really special guards. I mean, they would be, they they will bring fear to anyone's heart. I don't care who they're playing in the NCAA tournament. You mentioned one of those guys, Terrence Arsenal, one of the freshmen. He is actually being held out of the game tonight. He's nursing an ankle injury. We're being told that he should be ready to go on Sunday for Houston. He was a game time decision. They decided to rest him tonight. Chen penetrating, kicking. He'll find Mark. And it's going to be off of sharp SMU ball. There's Arsenault. He was warming up earlier today. But they decided, we're good. Let's hold him out until Sunday. You see how well taught they are in the offensive end because anytime the ball drives from the weak side, the weak side wing automatically is taught to, to roll to the corner, to drift to that corner as the defense shrinks and gives a lot of help. And that man is open on the weak side corner on the drive and drift. Disconnection turnover SMU. Sharp finds some space. Man, he is hustling down those loose balls. On the floor, kickball, stays with the Cougars. First to the floor usually wins, John, but most likely it's not the guy who takes the three-point shot and gives up his body. That's extra points for Sharp from Kelvin Sampson. You talked about all the freshmen who are playing important roles on a team this year. This time of year, Sharp, he's stepping up big. Well, that's the thing is that Kelvin Sampson talked about it. Just the impact of winning. How do you develop that? And he's got some good veteran players, and Jairus Walker certainly highly regarded coming in, but you've got to put all that together. And they put it together very quickly early in the season and had stayed consistent, and now you see them really maturing as the season develops. Under 10 minutes to play. Let's see if SMU has got another push in them. Phelps back to the basket. He'll draw contact. We've got a really good Sunday afternoon college basketball doubleheader for you on ESPN in the app. We start with Terquavian Smith and number 23 NC State hosting Armando Baycott in North Carolina at 1 Eastern. Then it's number 2 Houston led by Marcus Sasser hosting Kendrick Davis and Memphis. How good is that game going to be? That's going to be Houston 3 p.m. on Sunday. Great game, but an interesting game for UNC. I mean, UNC still has some work to do. It was about a year ago. No one was even discussing them, and then they end up in the national championship game. But Maybe on the outside looking in right now, but certainly has have the talent to make a push again. Here's the standings in the American right now. You have Tulane and Memphis tied for second place. We talked about Memphis starting to get healthy. Temple's a team they can do some damage with Aaron McKee at the head coach. They've got guards who can pour it in. Well, Tulane's a, kind of annoying to play against because of that defense that Ron Hunter's team plays. That kind of special amoeba type zone can throw you off throw you out of their rhythm they're committed to it and they do a really good job of protecting the three-point line in that zone 
was like a park move. Tracked down his own miss. Sasser finds Walker for the three. Everything going Houston's way tonight. Well, Calvin Sampson said he's allowed to do only three things, but I think he's allowing him to expand his game. We've seen a lot of different spots on the floor tonight for that special player, Jairus Walker. Williamson fading to his left off the mark. Walker with the rebound. Walker again. And it's just Houston. First one, all the loose balls in this second half. Well, there's no let up. You're up 20. There's no let up because that guy on the sideline thinks the score is 0 0. And he, those players better think that as well. Ooh, Sasser, a crossover. That was just nasty. Well, that's the thing. I mean, they hit you with one side and then they come back to the other and then steamroll you. That is excellent basketball. 15 points on the night. Four rebounds, four assists for Sasser. And here he is with a steal. Two on one break for Houston. Sasser dump off to Roberts. And he will back it out. Here's SMU with the steal. Williamson going the other way, and he'll be hacked by Sharp. Another timeout on the floor. It is all Houston here in Dallas, under eight minutes to play. 27 last time versus Iowa. They'll need that from him with this go round. John and Tim. All right, Kev, guys, appreciate the update. How about that? Purdue falls. Houston up to the two line on Joe Lenardi's bracketology list. I'm just glad the Tennessee fans didn't storm the court last night. And I'm sure Rick Barnes was happy as well. They probably were warned that Vanderbilt was fined 250000 for their court storm early in the week when they, or last week when they beat Tennessee. Uh, Kevin Willard's done a really good job at Maryland. I'm not surprised at all seeing his body of work at Seton Hall, what he did there during his tenure. And a terrific coach in the Big Ten again is just minefields everywhere, kind of like the Big 12. How about Joey Brackets? Always updating his list with from, a loss, updates it right from, away. From the bunker. What else is he going to do down there? <laughs> Sharp. You're going to leave him. He's going to take it. Well, it's not all with the rebound. It's a little quick, maybe a little deep for Kelvin Sampson's liking, but the freshman certainly has played well. He plays so hard. He's, under, he's picked up the culture very quickly. Williamson from the elbow. He had that mid-range shot going early, kind of went away with it. Uh, he was he was moving better without the ball at the beginning of this game and you see when he flashes in from that weak side into that mid post or elbow area he's got a nice touch Williamson four of seven from the floor he's got eight for SMU Sasser the step back Williamson all alone. Now that happens at times because Houston's guards think one thing when the shot goes up, go get the offensive rebound. And sometimes if you don't have proper rotation on the backside, you can throw over the top. Shed floater in the lane, it goes. Shed was waiting for the help to come, and he had his eyes up, head up, ready to make the next extra pass, but nobody came to protect. First 10 minutes of this game, it was tight. I mean, it was tied. SMU was in it. What changed? Well, Houston imposed their will. They got refocused, especially on the defensive end of the floor. And Got tight on the guards on the outside, made the guards feel uncomfortable and kind of took away what they wanted to do. And SMU started to get a little bit impatient. You know, one side possession, no pass possessions. Well, their defense has been pretty good tonight, all, all night long. I mean, they've played hard on this end, but at times not smart on the offensive end. Uh, 
it all pulls down his fourth rebound. Phelps cut off by Sasser. Decides to go to his left. And it's tipped up and in. And that's a good aggressive offensive play there by SMU. And they tried to force the issue after some movement. They've been pretty successful, but you are who you are. And after 25 games, Houston gives up 55 points a game. And you're going to have to play a real smart, tight game on the offensive end to beat this team. Lanier with a tough rebound, and he is fouled. SMU has actually scored four of their last five times down the floor. Under five minutes to play, find themselves down 17. Well, you know, when you look at Houston and you look at their body of work from the season, for the season, it has been so consistent. It never changes on the defensive end of the floor. It really doesn't. And in their only two losses, and Kelvin Sampson talked about this with us today, it was the free throw line got them. They were 12 for 23 against Alabama and 11 for 22 against against Temple. And other than that, there's not much to complain about with this basketball team this season. And for SMU, head coach Rob Lanier in his first season taking over the job, you can see the pieces starting to be built here, building the foundation of, of something special here. Well, and it's hard to take over a job when you've got to find guys in the spring as well. And they needed a point guard. They didn't. They don't really have a true point guard. That's an issue. They will bring one in. I, I guarantee it next year. They'll bring in multiple guys. And he's, he's got a real good coaching staff. He's an experienced, uh, well-connected guy. He's been in the business. Probably been in the business almost 35. Guys about the importance of enjoying your time as a ball player, knowing how Coach Lanier wants to back into the program, establish a tradition. It was a cool moment to watch. And you're trying to uh, is always the hardest, and I We've got eight players and no bench, and you know it took a while for Kelvin to get things going the way he wanted to. And Rob certainly doesn't have, have that far to go, but he's a proven winner. He he knows how to build a team and a program. This team has had so many close losses, still trying to figure out how to win. What's the biggest jump you make from year one to year two? Well, figure out what you need at this level and so who you can get who, who you can recruit that's good enough to win at this highest level and obviously this league's look, going to look a lot different next year without Houston and Cincinnati and UCF so they'll be on their way I would think they'll have this turnaround by next year and looking a lot different Francis stripped from behind foul called against Williamson we will step aside, under four minutes to play, Houston in control. A lot of Houston fans in the house as well. Kevin Connors is a favorite of most college basketball fanatics, but really the mid-majors love Kevin Connors because he comes out with the mid-major love every week. And being a former mid-major coach, I always appreciate that. But does he ever have a day off, Kevin Connors? One of the hardest working men in the business. Well, SMU, to their credit, has not shut it down. And not that I thought they would, but Houston, Houston can make you feel like you want to shut it down. But they continue to attack. Odigi finishes through the contact. This is what Rob... Lanier told us earlier, you know, from day to day, are we going to keep getting better? Are we going to keep our head up? And if their head was down after Houston pounded them in Houston, they kind of felt like, okay, how good can we be? And they've bounced back before. I don't think anybody will feel good about 
playing them in Fort Worth in the tournament in a couple weeks. Williamson gets the rebound out to Nuttall on the wing. And there's Phelps with the follow. Well, Phelps on the glass, I think, is important for SMU moving forward. He's a big, strong guard. He can give them a lot of support and get his own offense, not only on the offensive glass, but defensive glass tonight. We've seen him get defensive boards and go all the way the other way. No one puts a body on Phelps. And Shed got caught a little bit ball watching and not understanding where Zerk Phelps was. We have another full afternoon of college basketball Saturday on ESPN in the app. Number five, Kansas hosts number nine, Baylor, in a sonic blockbuster at 4 Eastern. College game day crew will be at Allen Fieldhouse to start the morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, and then at number... At 6, Syracuse, they host Duke. Another great day of college hoops. Houston just says SMU is making a run, forcing the turnover. Well, Scott Drew has got Baylor cooking right now. United George, Adam Flagler, LJ Cryer, and company. They are starting to defend and won 9 out of 10. Shed being the leader. Pulls it out. We'll run some clock for the Cougars. Middle ball screen again. Decides not to use the screen from Cheney. Dips into the lane, missing. There's Roberts with a defender all over and pulls down the offensive rebound. Oh, Shed's so smart. He understands. You just got to get it up on the room. Give yourself an opportunity to do that. Go get an offensive rebound. Phelps comes away with the steal, and then Sasser commits the foul in transition. You know, it may seem crazy, but it's just a 12-point game. 2.30 to play. It's not over yet. Well, SMU finally has become comfortable on the offensive end. They're moving the ball from side to side. They're spacing the court a lot better. And then they're dribble driving and attacking the rim. And then in transition, they're trying to get out and move the ball right to the rim. They're not trying to shoot and force threes. And then defensively, They've done an excellent job, I believe, all night long. But if you're SMU, they have not hit their free throws tonight, shooting 60% from the line, 12 of 20. Oh, they knock off the number two team in the country. Got to get the free ones. Tremont Mark just, he sized up that potential trap at half court and just attacked one of the trappers, stayed under control. They can roll Odigi. That's been there all night for SMU. And Odigi will go back to the free throw line. Well, SMU's kind of taking a page out of Houston in the way they run their offense. They've got space the court with two short shooters in the corners and then another one out on the deep wing and trying to get Houston to play a little two-on-two -two in the middle of the floor. That time a good roll, kind of a short roll to the rim and ODG extend it up. SMU, how do you speed Houston up well, the, 207 to play? Well, they're trying to extend their defense a little bit, not only in the full court. You see them press here if, it, if this is a make. But in the half court, they've been kind of running at the dribble, forcing sideline and see if they can get a trap and have Houston make a mistake. But so hard to trap these guys and press them because they're so smart, they're so quick with the basketball and well-oiled in, in their schemes press offense-wise. Shed in the air, finds Cheney. Sasser in no hurry. 
It looked like Shed was in deep trouble, but he found a way. Leading scores tonight, Marcus Sasser had three points at the half. Has exploded here in this second half, and Zurich Phelps. Even with a tough shooting night, he still has 17 points. Uh, I like the way Zurich Phelps has played tonight. He's been aggressive in transition. He's done a good job on the glass, defensively solid. But you know, the thing about Houston that makes him special is that Sasser has a three-point first half. And his facial expression never changes. He doesn't try to come out in the second half and get his numbers. He's all about the team and winning and finding a way to impact winning, which he did big time in the second half. So Houston calls a timeout, up by 14. Going to be a little soft pressure here just to take some time off the clock. Actually, it's a zone, three-quarter court zone press. And it'll fall back to the man. Actually, they're falling back into the zone. Phelps knocks down the three. And the lead is down to 11. SMU pressure forces the Cougars to call a timeout. 134 to play. Well, Houston was not organized against the press on that possess after that make. And Sasser trapped in the corner. And he dribbles out of it and draws the foul. That's one place you don't want to put it. Luckily, they threw it to their veteran player who's smart enough to find a way out of that trap. But he might have tweaked his leg a little bit in the process. And that last possession in the half court defensively, Houston they extended the press from the soft three-quarter court press, then they went back into their 3-2 defense, which they rarely play, but at the end of the games, Kelvin Sampson likes to go back in it to let the opponent kind of look at it, slow down, and take some time off the clock. All right, let's check in with Kevin in the studio. Yeah, and John, we want to let you know, Iowa, Ohio State underway right now on the ESPN app. Hawkeyes firmly in the field for the moment. You'll see it next year on ESPN2 after we go final in Dallas. All right, thank you so much. Under 90 seconds to play here in Dallas. Houston was up by as many as 23 here in the second half. SMU has made a run, but they could not cut it to single digits. And Houston went back to the zone for one possession and one made three, and that was enough for Kelvin Sampson to see. One minute to play. Reach and foul called against Williamson. That will send Sasser back to the free throw line. SMU is staying aggressive in their pressure. He's going to tighten up those traps. At that point, when you have the ball handler trapped, there's no reason to foul him with only nine seconds on the shot clock. Tim, there are some who are still closely monitoring the score. Well, you live in Las Vegas, and you're doing the XFL, so that's that's your alley. I don't know anything about that. 59.3 to play. Houston up by 14. I'm an X and O guy, John. Now, and one of the best at it. <laughs> that's why I just asked you the questions. But I can't get Kelvin Sampson to talk basketball. He doesn't need to say anything. This team needs to just go out on the floor because every night they find a way to impress. Phelps attacking, finishing, plus the foul. It's clear from the start Houston wanted to take Phelps out of this, but he has stayed aggressive from the tip. Now has himself 22. Going to the free throw line and try to convert the three point play. Free throw line tonight. 14 for 24 for SMU.
Cheney all alone. Shot clock turned off. Well, I don't care who you are, what league you're in, it doesn't matter. When you go on the road and can win by double digits, you're a good basketball team, and Houston is better than that. They are excellent. Houston will hold it off. They will move to 24 and 2 on the season. The number two team in the country. An 80 to 65 win over SMU. Stay tuned for Ohio State and Iowa next here on ESPN for Tim Welsh and our entire ESPN crew. I'm John Shrippen. Now let's send it over to Kevin Brown and Robbie Hunt.